the world of SUVs, and specifically the mid-size SUV segment, there's a lot of brands to choose from. And it's pretty safe to say that the competition is fierce. What we have here in today's video is the brand new, fully redesigned 2024 Lincoln Nautilus. And after watching today's review, I think many of you will agree with me that the Nautilus has everything it takes to be able to climb to the top of this segment at least for a little while because as we mentioned it is very competitive and brands are constantly redesigning and renewing their models to stay at the top but in today's video i'm going to do my best to showcase the new nautilus and you guys let me know what you think so we're going to start by doing a classic walk around but before we do that i want to give special thanks to south hills lincoln who provided uh, the Nautilus for today's review. They're the same dealership I go to every time when I film Lincolns and uh, they're great to deal with. If you guys are in the market for any kind of Lincoln and you live in the area, I'm gonna leave all their contact information in the description below. But the Nautilus in today's video has an interesting name for its color. It's called Red Carpet Metallic and it looks really, really good with the black accents. Now these black accents, they come from a jet appearance package. This is a $3,000 option. Now the Lincoln Nautilus comes in three different trim levels. It's the premiere for the base model. Then we have a reserve like our tester here today. And then of course the black label. This is a fully loaded reserve. And with the jet appearance package, you get these 22 inch wheels that are sitting on 225, 45, 22 tires and the black wheels they just match the red it looks great also with this appearance package you get this black fender batch here all the black accents on the front bumper and the grill and as we walk around here it's the same when we get to the rear end in my opinion the jet appearance package is a must because it does indeed enhance the appearance we're here at the rear as you guys can tell and uh New LED lighting up front and in the rear, of course. We got plenty of room in the back. The seats fold down, of course. Now, as we get to the front, we got new LED lighting here as well. And this just wraps around through the whole grill, even the emblem. And you know, it's just a classy, very, nice look to the new Nautilus. And as we pop the hood, the Nautilus has two engine alternatives. The one we're driving here today has the entry level two liter inline four. It's turbocharged, it's got 250 horsepower. It also comes available with a turbocharged hybrid powertrain, which is a four cylinder as well. And that has 310 horsepower. And from driving this today, that would definitely be the engine alternative that I would go with if this were my Nautilus. The 250 horsepower one, it, it, it kind of depends what you're used to, of course, for the average person. I don't think it matters all that much, but I would prefer having a little bit more power. Now, if this is your first peak, this interior is absolutely amazing. And as we grab the door handle, they are very uh, much inspired by the Continental. Very cool door handles. You just have a little button on the back here, and we open it up and check this out. This is absolutely amazing. We have a 48 inch panoramic screen all across the dash. We'll get to that here in a minute. But first we'll quickly talk about the door. The Nautilus gets the same system that the Navigator has. It's a 28 speaker Rebel Ultima sound system. A very nice design. The metal finish as well. Now this lights up in ambient lighting in different colors obviously we'll showcase that as well here in a minute but we have a dark leather interior if you go with a black label you can pick different themes they do have one in stock at south hills lincoln with the red interior and it looks absolutely amazing but part with the jet appearance package you also get suede inserts in the seat these bolsters by the way they can be configured to be very tight or the opposite so it's just a very comfortable experience inside of the new Nautilus but let's jump in and before we start it up very interesting design for the steering wheel also it's kind of like an oval shaped but pretty standard here we have a little cubby space there we got USB USB-C 
two cup holders. We got wireless charging right here. I love these physical buttons. So this is just for the annoying auto start stop. And then we got the hazards. We got the defroster there, camera button, different drive modes. And then we have the piano key style of gear selector. And then we have an 11 inch screen here, which works together with this 48 inch dash screen. So let's start her up. Typical Lincoln chime. Move this GoPro out of the way. And I mean, this just looks so cool. I mean, it's super futuristic. And the cool thing about this screen that we'll demonstrate here right away is that it's configurable. So when you go to the touch screen, you can click this button right here, and then you can configure these three screens right here. So for instance, if I don't want the clock at the far right, I can do this. I can go to fuel economy and I just move it over here and it pops up over there. I mean, how cool is that? I can put tire pressure over here. Look at that. I think that is so cool. Now, if you don't want anything up here, you can just go calm and it goes away. And you just have like a little purple hue there, just like you have over here. So this is just speedometer. And if I click over here, that pops up right there where you can change the volume and so on. Now it also comes with a digital scent. Currently it doesn't have a cartridge in there, but apparently it'll uh, throw out some scents. You can pick different scents and I guess it smells good in here, which is also a cool feature. So if we go to my phone, welcome to Google Maps, go to settings, and then the map pops up on this part of the main screen. I mean, it's just, it's so cool. I love what Lincoln did with this new dash. Then obviously you have all your settings and apps and Sirius XM and all kinds of stuff here. Very obviously responsive screen. You can go in here with your seats and then it has massaging seats. It's actually pretty good massaging. Usually I complain about this in different vehicles like my Audi for instance and my Mercedes have massaging seats but they absolutely suck. I was actually feeling these when, when um, I tried it out earlier. Now if we go here to the uh, fan, this is very Tesla inspired. So if you want to change the direction where the, of the airflow, you just move it with your finger. So it's just very cool. Same with pretty much all the vents here. You go down here, we have our heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel. And then you just adjust your temperature here. It's a very easy interface to learn. It didn't take me long at all. But it, like I just keep staring at this dash. It is so freaking cool. I love it. But one more thing that we're going to do is we're going to click right there. And then we'll go to ambient lighting. You can pick all these different colors. And then you can obviously pick the, the brightness of them. But at the time of filming this, it's obviously daylight. So you don't see it as good. But if we take a look here in the door panel, I'm going to switch to red, and then that changes, and we'll go to yellow. Yeah, it's a little harder to tell a difference, but we'll go back to blue, which is my favorite. And then it obviously lights up here in the footwells. You can't really tell as much now, as again, it is daylight. But we'll hop outside, because we do have to check out the room in the back the seats back up here and this is my driving position this is my knee room plenty of room back here and like I say in every one of my reviews I like doing this comparison because I am you know fairly I'm six foot two so I mean tons of headroom it's almost better headroom in the second row than it was in the navigator so that is very impressive Yeah, heated seats in the back here and again I love these buttons and check out the location for the charging ports. They're not down there like they usually are. They're up here in the back of the driver's seat and the passenger seat. So that's very cool as well. That's different. I don't think I've seen that on any other car. But yeah, not much to say else back here except for it is phenomenal amounts of room back here. Of course, we have a panoramic sunroof also. All right, so let's get out on the road, put it in reverse. Phenomenal backup camera, 360, of course. And with the steering wheel, I found myself driving like this, mainly. 
I don't know. It's just uh, odd having a uh, oval steering wheel. I have, however, gotten used to it during the day, though. I mean, I don't mind it. It just looks a little odd. But it's very quiet in here in the cabin, except for my camera gear <laughs> flinging around here. So we're going to mash it. And I think for most people, they, they don't really care all that much. But like I said earlier, I would probably pick the hybrid powertrain with 60 extra horsepower because they can feel a little underwhelming when you really want to merge but then again maybe i uh speed too much but of course the nautilus comes with all the creature comforts uh, in in terms of features that we've all gotten used to over the years such as collision warning blind spot monitoring we have adaptive cruise control. It comes with Blue Cruise as well, which is a type of autonomous driving, although it's not fully autonomous. And like we mentioned earlier, the competition in this segment is very competitive. There's so much to choose from. There's a Genesis GV80, there's a BMW X3, there's a RX from Lexus. The list goes on and on and on. But the feel that you get from this new Nautilus, especially with the new interior, it sets itself apart. It really does. I haven't seen anything in the segment that looks like this or feels like this. It's got quality feel to it. And I think this year is gonna be big for the Nautilus in terms of sales. So the Nautilus that we're driving today is a Reserve, which is the trim right underneath the black label. The one that we're driving is stickered at 69,000. If you go for a black label, fully loaded, it's about 80. However, if you go for the Premier, it doesn't have to be that expensive. It starts in the low 50s. So a Nautilus doesn't have to cost around $70,000, dollars for it to look this nice. But like with most models, they always have different trims. And if you want all the nicer stuff, the price tag is obviously going to go up. But with all the tech features and the digital dash, it gives us an idea of what the new Navigator is going to look like interior wise once that drops which should be this year as well i just think lincoln is doing a phenomenal job and giving their customers that really premium feel and i've mentioned it in pretty much every lincoln review that i've ever done lincoln is so good at differentiating themselves from ford nothing in here absolutely nothing feels like a ford edge like zero and that is a really 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 good thing because we all know lincoln is ford's preppy cousin many of the models they share the same platform and so on but uh, they just again do such a good job with making lincoln's not feel like ford at all i'm gonna put my sunglasses here in the little sunglass holder cubby area and as we end the video we're obviously going to do it in uh the POV format because this is the best view from the driver's seat with the 48 inch panoramic screen and the funky looking steering wheel, which is cool though. Let me know what you guys think of the new Nautilus. Does it stand a chance in the segment against Lexuses and BMWs and Genesis and so on? I know that it does, but I wanna know what you think. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.